Hi, this is George from Upfish, your marketing automation expert. And in today's video, we're going to be continuing our outbound uh, AI automation one-click journey. Uh, but this time we're gonna be using uh, LinkedIn scraping. Um, so um, similar as before, when we were doing job scraping using SERP AI, we're going to be setting up ones for LinkedIn scraping. And again, we're gonna be trying to do it in as few clicks and as few effort as possible. So I'll just jump straight into it. Again, I really hope you've been watching my previous videos. If you haven't, make sure you check them out, subscribe so you can get notified to the new ones. But what we're gonna be doing here today is essentially telling our AI assistant, I want to target um, a certain group of people in a certain country. Um, you already know everything about my company because you're my assistant. Design me an email, tell me who to reach out to, and then do it for me. So let's see how it works. So I'm just gonna jump straight into it. Here, I'm going to be setting up a campaign and I'm gonna call it, um, who do I want to search for? Let's say I want to search for Chief Marketing Officers in the United Kingdom who like automation, all right? And again, I'm gonna map this to my company. So once again, if you've got multiple brands, so let's just say I manage Upfish and I manage Upfish Test and Upfish More Test, or just Dog Washing Company. I would say, all right, this particular campaign is for this company. All right, click on it. And then that would associate the AI assistant with this campaign. So this AI assistant knows everything about Upfish. It knows what I do, knows how much I charge, knows what products I have, blah, 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 all good. So I'm gonna set now the outbound type to LinkedIn since we've already done Apollo. And I will say, I want to approach C, oops, chief, ah, it's so slow at typing, chief marketing officers in the United Kingdom who have used the hashtag, how do I do hashtags? Hashtag automation, all right? Oh my God, so simple, so easy, so pointless, probably too generic, but we wanna keep it easy at first. So I've put that in, I was upset, I'm sending my AI. I, I, wanna, I wanna search on LinkedIn for anybody who's a chief marketer also in the UK who's used the hashtag automation. Um, but you know what, I'm gonna add it. It is in the ID campaign as well. Uh, I don't need that at this stage, and I'm just gonna press a button, see what happens. So what happens is it sends a webhook with this button, and that webhook comes to here. So if I just, uh, oops, I saved some changes, don't know what those changes were, uh, but it just ran something, I think, or did I uh, unsave it? Let's see, uh, do, 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 go back. What time is it now? It's 2.42. No, I guess I must have uh, had it open. Oh, no, it is working. Don't know what happened just then. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's go back into the uh, the history of runs. Oh, okay, don't know what happened, don't know how I missed that. Okay, but anyway, so I press the button and it works. So what happens? It sends that webhook information with the record ID to my make automation. It then searches for a record in that same air table, looking at, or sorry, in the same base, I should say, looking at that same table for the campaign information. So remember, chief market officers in the UK who like automation, uh, this is what I wanna do. It then gets the record by using the record ID of the brand it's associated with to look for that company information. So yeah, Upfish. Most importantly, I have the ID from my assistant done. Comes into the router and it goes to the outbound type LinkedIn. So it goes into the LinkedIn folder. LinkedIn folder, it goes into the LinkedIn branch and it goes to my chat GPT. So what happens here? I'm sending it a message. Where's my message input? I'm telling it, I'm creating an outbound campaign using Google to search for LinkedIn profiles. Check your vector store. And then I've mapped in the vector store from the Airtable output to basically, I'm telling it, look at my value prop and my writing style doc. Then construct me a search query I can use in Google that will fulfill my campaign objective. And then I map in that campaign objective. So again, we have here, I want to approach chief marketing officers in the UK who have used the hashtag automation. This is an example of a search. So I give it an example. Construct me good email copy. To do that, refer to my writing style, my value prop. Use language of a six role. Again, you can change this. Use the same prompt I have, make your own. I don't care. I don't take it personally at all. And then output the results in a JSON with the following format. All right, so what do I get here? Google search. Site LinkedIn.com, looking for chief marketing officer, hashtag automation, United Kingdom. Oh my gosh, so easy. That's why I gave it an easy one to work with. Reasoning, the Google search query is designed to target LinkedIn profiles of chief marketing officers in the UK who have used hashtag automation content. Gives me some email copy. 
All right, then it sends me a Slack message. So if someone else is running this on my behalf, I'm still gonna get a Slack alert to say, your chief marketing officer in the UK who like automation campaign has been generated. Click Airtable to approve it. And it also updates the record of all of the information. So we saw this happening live. So it's set to approve status now. And I have here, I want to approach chief marketing officers in the UK. We already wrote this. Uh, let me make this bigger. So here I have the link for linkedin.com, chief marketing officer, automation, UK. Looks good to me. If I wanted to change anything, I would put this in quotation marks. You don't need to change anything, but it's so easy to do it if you don't like it. This is just like a guide, I guess. So you look at it, great, easy to change. My emails, okay, great. I would never use this, but it's a great place to you know start from. So I would just copy it, come into instantly. I would set up a campaign. Da, 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 add new, test, blah, blah, continue, and then just copy and paste it in. Yeah, you know how campaigns work. I'm just gonna use an old camp. I'm gonna use a, the campaign ID from a previous campaign because I'm not gonna send any of these emails. It's purely for example. Oh, it's already there, great. So it's bigger again. So it's giving me some ideas for an email campaign. Da, da, one, two, three emails. I've got my start page, it's starting from zero. I've got my instant ID. Looks like I am good to go. So when I like what I have, I just mark this to in progress. And then the next automation will eventually come into place. So once you have your campaign set as in progress, it will start running how often you have this automation running. So it goes to NA10. You can set it to trigger once every minute, once every day, once every week, uh, once every year. It really depends on money you have and how many leads you need and what tools you have, but it, it, it's up to you. But hypothetically, you should say you have this to run like once every two hours or whatever. But what happens is, We'll check the master campaigns for anybody who is a LinkedIn campaign and in progress. So in this case, it's found the chief market officers in the UK who want automation. Then it makes a search for any associated companies for those campaigns. So it's found Upfish, which means it now has access to that assistant if we need it. Then it makes a request to SERP AI. And what it's doing here is it's basically searching for the next group of people on the list. So here we are looking at page number two. All right, because my start in an earlier run, start page increased, all right? So we're looking at page two and it's found some people. Pavan, uh, Chetan, um, Lauren Edmondson, whatever. So it's found 100 people, but it might not always find people. So if you're looking for something really niche, like other craft drivers in the Isle of Man who speak Turkish, you might only, you know, there might not be anybody. Um, so what happens there is you will get a, basically the organic search results will say it's fully empty. So it will come into a false branch, which hasn't triggered here because there are people. But if it goes into the false branch where there's no one left to find, it will update the, um, the status to finished. So it will all be done. It will no longer run again. And you'll get a Slack message to say, hey, this campaign is finished. Don't sweat it, all good. In this case, there are 100 people. So we'll move to the next part, which is an air table. And what happens here is we're looking at that campaign again. We're matching it to the very first ID and we're just increasing the start page by another 100. So it started off at 100, well, it started off at zero, then it went to 100 in a test I made. And just now in this test, it's gone up by another 100 to 200. So that means we're not searching for the same people each time. Then it goes to a code. So it's taking all of the information from a SERP AI results. And it's basically saying, get me everybody who's last night, who, get me all of the text that comes after linkedin.com slash in slash. So all of these are LinkedIn profile names and we just need to split it out. So I've got 100 items here of people's LinkedIn addresses and it goes to find email. And I forgot to put in my API key. All right, so clearly I've just got a bunch of uh, error messages because I forgot to put in my API key. So what we will do is I'll put it in and then run each step uh, one by one. So we don't need to start the goddamn video all over again. So uh, I'll go into find email, put in my API key, and now we start seeing what happens. So again, just like most other modules, I use find email. I set up a batch rate, batch limiting on this so that it doesn't try and do it all at the same time. So what we do is, it set, I think I set it to like 10 every 20,000 milliseconds. Incredibly, incredibly cautious of me. Probably unnecessary, but uh, I just wanna make sure that it works properly. So I will let this run. Okay, so once we've actually made the call using a, an actual API address, we see that we now got some people returned to us. So people, sometimes it's found an email and their company, job title, sometimes it won't have. 
So what we next have is an if branch, which basically tests to see the people that, is there an email or not, all right? So in 35 times out of 100, we found the email, 65 times we didn't. But next I'm gonna to come to the bottom branch. So if we didn't find an email, what I'm searching for here, sorry, excuse my dog, who gets? Stop. What we're searching for here is an error name that is equal to Axios error, because there's, sometimes it won't find an email because there is no email or just can't find one. And sometimes it's because we've got the batching wrong and we're getting an error to say, you made too many requests, try it again. So in this case, it didn't work. So in this case, it's just because they couldn't find the email addresses for all of these people. But sometimes there'll be an Axios error to say, oh no, the, you made the wrong request. So in that case, what happens is we make another find email call and then the thing continues as normal. But so for the 35 we did find will continue as, as normal. So first we come into OpenAI. So as you see here, we've got the name, we've got the email, we've got the domain, the company. Now we could just use that. Depending on your email provider, you could just whack in a name. You don't need to have every cold email. It's like, hi Pavan, hi George. Just say like, hey, how's it going? What you really need is the email address. So this is very much an optional step. Delete it if you don't need it, you think it's unnecessary. But basically what we're doing here is we're saying, here is a full name in an email. So we're patching in, let me just make this a bit bigger. We're saying, all right, here's the full name in an email. Based on the info, give me a best first guess, last name, and output the info, first name, last name. So here we go, Pavan Kumar Kandula. Try and give me a first name and a last name. Because again, if I was using a text parser, I might have Hi Pavan, or I might have Hi Pavan Kumar. I might have his last name as Kandula. It might be last name Kumar Kandula. The text parser is unreliable based on what you're putting in. So at least I asked ChatGPT, you know, it might know better than I would. So if I test this step now, okay, then we can see that we've now got 35 results and we have first name Pavan Kumar, last name Kandula, Chetan, Dati, Ahmed, Bawal, all good. So now we've managed to split up the first name and the last names. So now it's ready to go into instantly. So if I click on this, basically what we're going to be doing is we're putting in the campaign ID, first name, last name, all of this stuff, and it will get uploaded because of the mess up I had earlier on. I need to unpin the full find email and execute ID. So we'll do that in a second. So basically I would add in the API key, just we would get a result to say whether it's been uploaded or not. Based on that result, we have a filter. Okay, to say, because imagine that you found a duplicate who's already in a workflow, it will basically, this will come back as zero. So you can say, all right, don't put them in. And then it will get added to the CRM as a result. So let me unpin it all and we'll try running it from scratch with all of the API keys added this time. The full workflow added and we should start seeing some names added into the contacts branch. So I will run this now. Okay, so now that all of the API keys have been added and it's ran, we see what's happened. We've checked the master campaigns. We've got the upfish record. It's made the request. It's checked the LinkedIn profiles. It's updated the start page. It's split out the 100 items. It's asked find email to find me the emails for 67 of them. It went through the filter. If there was an Axios error, there was for one. It made the call to find email again, but in this case, it still couldn't find one. So even though there was an error originally, it was an unfindable email. For the 35 that it did find, oh, sorry, the 33, it went to get the first names and last names. So it sent them to instantly where they've been added into a campaign. Went through the filter to make sure that they were actually, you know, sent in. And then they were added to Airtable. So as we can see here, I now have a bunch of people in Airtable where I have basic information I need, especially where their contact source was from, the campaign they're involved in and the brand involved. So at this point, everything is working fine. I can have this running in the background constantly, essentially to always be scraping LinkedIn for things I want, which is very useful if you don't have access to Apollo because API is also quite cheap. All you really need to make this run is find the mail. And then of course, open AI, but that's totally optional. If you really, really need the first name and last name, you can use a text parser. I use open AI just because it's there and it's cool. And you only really need it if you, again, if you don't wanna use it, you don't need to, just don't use the first names in a, an email you're sending. All right, great. So again, I hope you liked it. Like, subscribe, comment, tell everybody you know about me. And uh, yeah, check this out. It's all on my school, all of the templates, the guides, the videos, everything you need. And if you need help, check out my Gumroad for either one-on-one -on -one help or just for me to do it all for you if you want this for your company. All right, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.